Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Tribal Talk. As always, I'm your host, Dustin Lee, and of course, the three fine gentlemen to the left of me, Gavin Baxley, congratulations on the Jesse Owens Classic, by the way, PR. Evan Ward, Taylor Gunn. Your Wetumpka Indians now rise to 6-1 and one on the season, 3-1 and one in region play after a victory over Stanhope in a classic rivalry game. Ooh, and it was a stressful one, that's for sure. Really impressed with Wetumpka being able to, to stick with it there and, and play a full game and, and come out on top, but man, I, I don't like those stressful games like that. Yeah. I think those stressful games are fun as a fan, maybe watching from the TV, but on the sideline filming it, it is very stressful. It's a kind of a harsh environment almost. But like the offense played great. I think the offense played good, actually. Um, the defense was kind of kind of slow the whole game, but I think overall Watonka did a pretty good job. To me, it wasn't too stressful. You know, it's it's just how a rivalry game goes. When the scoring started, I feel like Watonka had control of the game up till the fourth quarter. I think it was a pretty smooth win, and you know it is a win, so we'll take it. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about because from what I saw, it was fourth quarter, about three minutes. Stanhope has the ball and a couple timeouts. I've seen enough Auburn games to know what happens in that situation, <laughs> but I was very thankful when that did not happen. We forced a nice, you know, you know, four and out. We stopped them. They didn't get any, you know, completions, any yardage there. We turned the ball back over to us and, you know, just ran the clock out for a victory. And it was nice to see what Tumka not only beat Stanhope, but beat them at home. First time beating Stanhope at home since 2016, I think. Yes, Remember you told me yeah, something about this, 2016. Bit. First time beating them at home in Millbrook. Knowing that it's a region game. Now three and one, you know. Any region victory is a great victory. Well, and, you know, Evan talked about the offense, but, I mean, the thing that stuck out for us was the defense, 100%. I mean, there were tons of big stops. You know, Dwayne Jackson, he got a, a nice interception and, and had a lot of a nice tackles for loss, that kind of stuff. And overall, I, I think that's what won us the game, was just the efficiency on defense. S speaking of Dorian, Dorian was playing both sides of the field a little bit against stand up too. I think he even had two receptions for, I think, about 60 yards, yeah. which is very impressive exactly, for a exactly corner. Exactly, 60 yards. Or, yeah. Excuse me, a safety. But, you know, it, it's good to see a good player like Dorian, a senior leader like Dorian, stand out on both sides of the field. Yeah, and he's a guy we've mentioned a lot on the show. It's great to see him now as our player of the game for this week. And, you know, uh, seven tackles, that's not exactly doing him justice because he was everywhere on the field. I mean, any time you saw a big hit, you would see number four. And it's, it's crazy seeing him out of the safety position getting these tackles for loss. You don't see that very often. So it's a very interesting stat line for him, and it's great to see him you know, be player of the game and show up defensively, as you said, as a senior and a leader of the team. Again, also for Dorian, he, we did have a great, like, I mean, he, was, he got up for this interception, too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it was just a great play by him, great defense play, and it was honestly a well-placed ball, but I think Dorian just wanted it more, too. Yeah, to me, he actually should have had a second interception, you know, he did, he especially on the replay. The ref saying that tie-ups go to the offense. I think he really had that one, and so it's unfortunate to see just one. It is. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, offensively, I'm not very happy. I feel like Nate regressed a little because we've been – I would say this is Nate's first not-so-good game of the season. Nate has been playing very well uh, in these pr uh, previous weeks, and he's been improving every week. This is the first sign of regression I think I've seen. I don't think what? it was necessarily a regression. I just think that, you know, it's the rivalry game. You know, you, the defense for Stanhope was, it was a lot of pressure for him, too, so I wouldn't give him too much discredit. Well, yeah, and, and I wouldn't say, like you said, I wouldn't say he's really regressed. I, I would just say that Stanhope, they have a, a very strong defense also, and so I think that that was a, a big factor in it. But, I mean, we still saw some successful plays. I mean, we saw the trick play. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nate getting a receiving touchdown, which is just awesome to see. Yeah, it's always great to see. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think offensively, you know, it, it was a lot slower of a game than it normally is for mm -hmm. us, but I, I think it was still a, a successful offensive performance. Yeah, get, like Gavin said, it was a, a successful offensive performance, but stand-up's defense, we can't let the record fool us like we said last week. They held us, so we averaged about 33 points a game to 21, mm -hmm. which is very impressive on stand-up's part. Yeah, and by no means am I saying Nate is going to continue you know, to have bad games. I'm just saying for right then, you know, it seemed like he slowed down a little from what we were usually expecting from him. I know he's going to bounce back against Carver here. This is going to be a very big game for him that he's going to have to, you know, show up. But we'll talk about that later on in the show. This is still about Stanhope. But I still think he's a great player. I think he's still a great leader. He's going to continue to improve. Remember, he's only a junior. He's still got, you know, long ways to go. In terms of receiving, it was pretty evenly dispersed among the team. As you said, even Nate himself getting a reception, but you know, usually our big target in Quake Sean only got four receptions off five targets. 
handful of yards and a touchdown. So again, it's like with Mike, how he won't get a lot of yards, but he'll always manage to get six somehow. That's our thing with our, most of the time it seems with the receivers, is they're not big yardage guys, but if they're in the end zone, you can, you can count on them. And you know, we have a player who's not the player of the game, but I think he was the key to the game, Logan Wayhaw, who didn't miss that night. Uh, he was two for two on field goals, made the extra point. And I think it's very important that we have him because, you know, like Stanhope was in the red zone a lot and we had to stop him on four plays. And you know, they don't have a kicker like we do. And if they did, it, it might be a different story. That's a great point. Now, that's something not a lot of people realize. You know, you look at the kicker as a bit of an undervalued position. And, you know, it's great that we have a kicker. You know, we've been seeing a lot in these matchups. There's some kids out there who just don't know how to kick a football. And I know that sounds a little mean, but, hey, we've seen the games. You know, I'm not going to name any names or anything, but. It's great that we have Logan, and I love him. You know, he's a great player, great addition to the team. So now we're going to move on here into our, you know, uh, segment with Coach. So here's Into the Woods presented by Ivy Creek. Welcome to the Woods. I'm here with Coach Bear. Coach, you're coming off of a big win against a rival. Gets a lot of momentum. How are you looking to carry that into this upcoming game? Well, momentum is fleeting. What we do is we work on each day being at our best. And uh, we know where we are right now, where, where we expect it to be in terms of the growth of our team. Uh, having the wins stack up is not an easy thing to do. I'm proud of the guys for that. But it's just another week and another region opponent. That's how we're taking this game. So now looking at this week with Carver, we know they have a very talented team, especially on the defensive line. So how are you looking to, to overcome that strong defensive line of theirs? No question they have some special players on that side of the football and on the team as, as a whole. Their quarterback's a very good player as well. Probably be the best uh, quarterback that we've faced thus far, uh, possibly. Uh, the game of football is a team game. So what we got to do to handle any good team is execute as a unit. So offensively speaking, on our offensive line, it starts within the communication and their execution. That's how you're going to limit uh, a, a very good defense like they have, especially up front. That's what's great about this game is that we're going to work together. We're going to execute in the moment every time together. We're trying to apply that championship mindset as a team, and we expect to do that Friday night. And this is one of the bigger games of the season for sure. And, and so how important is it to, to have this as a home game? You're going to have a, a big crowd behind you cheering you on the whole time. And just how crucial is that for the environment and for the team? Oh, it's great to be at home. Uh, without a doubt, I think everyone who's been to a Wetumpka football game this year knows how much fun we have at, at the sportsplex there. The fans are great, the cheerleaders, the band, the dance. We're really, you get to see the tribe at its best. So for us to be able to be on the field and know that so much energy is all surrounded about what we're doing on the field. The guys are excited about it and it gives us that edge. I think that's what one of the things here that's being created this football season is that at Wetumpka, our fans and our crowd and our support uh, creates an edge for us on the field and our guys are looking forward to it. Well, Coach, we're looking forward to the big environment and looking forward to seeing y'all play Carver this, this Friday. So thank you once again and good luck. And thank you to Ivy Creek for sponsoring this segment. Before we start discussing, you know, our matchup against Carver, Gavin, how's volleyball? Well, you know, they had senior night last night, and they congrats to them on having just a, a successful season of, of 6 and 0 in area play. This upcoming week, they'll be hosting uh, the area tournament, so good luck to our Indians volleyball team. Yeah, it's great for them, you know, uh, Coach Smith. Congratulations yeah. on her season. A wonderful teacher, wonderful coach. Uh, Evan, how's the region stand? So for the region, uh, what's Uncle right now is third. We're six and one on, our rec uh, on the regular season record, and we're three and one in the region. Uh, pretty much, we got to win out. We we've got to beat Carver. We have to beat Lanier. We have to win out in the season. Carver also needs to beat Pike Road whenever they play each other, and it'd be a little bit nice for Pike Road to lose another game too. So yeah, that's great. I love seeing Pike Road lose. You know? <laughs> uh, that may sound a little salty, but honestly, I don't care. So <laughs> this week's matchup against Carver. Uh, we actually lead in the all-time series, 6-3. and three. Uh, Last time facing them was in 2017, 27-7, Wetumpka winning. And I just want to see that again, really. Oh, yeah. But this is not the Carver from 2017. They've got some pretty big dudes on their team this year. You know? Oh, yeah. No, they, they have some, some serious threats, especially on the defensive line. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to be talking about them uh, quite a bit during yeah. the game this week. Uh, James Smith, of course, defensive lineman. I mean, he's ranked first in the state for uh, – Alabama and, and that's just I mean, that's incredible he's physical he you know we've seen the scouting reports say 
He's a bull in a china shop. I mean, yeah. he's just an elite, I mean, elite player. We're going to have to be able to limit his ability to get to the quarterback. Yeah. The, these same reports say his ceiling is early, like first round draft. I don't even want to know what his floor is, you know? <laughs> This guy is, is is legitimately scary. And you said he's the ranked number one. That's right. Ranked number one recruit. Well, they also have the fourth ranked recruit on the same team <laughs> in uh, K, uh, Quay Rasaw. That's right. That's right. So, I'm not, you know, it's, <laughs> it's looking kind of scary. <laughs> oh, yeah. This uh, this Carver team's a little different than it was back in 2017. But uh, it's 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 a scary sight. I mean, that D-line is, is crazy. Uh, Quay Rasaw, he's... He's, he's a linebacker playing a, a D lineman's position. He's like an early Vaughn Miller in my eyes. I think he's a scary sight. And also, we can't forget to mention their quarterback, who's thrown 25 touchdowns on the season. Uh, Christian Johnson, I think his name is. This, that's a crazy oh, stat think, to me. I think when you got those two dudes on your team, you kind of forget the quarterback, you know? It's yeah, no, the the defensive side of the thing, side of the ball, excuse me, they, they really kind of outshine the offense, but I mean, their offense has been elite. I mean, Marquan Jamerson, their receiver, last week, I mean, he had three touchdowns uh, in, a, in a tough loss, but still an outstanding performance from him. And, you know, they've been strong running the ball, too, with Antonio Trone. You know, and this is a – we've been talking about this game since about week one or two. We said in week one, this was one of the games that you were going to have to watch. Uh, I believe so. And, and, you know, coached by Marcus Gardner, it's his first season as a head coach, second season with the team, much like Bear Woods, first-year head coach. And he's shaping up a good team. We're shaping up a good team. This is going to be a game. And, you know, it's going to be a very physical game. As you said, they've got two of the you know, top ten recruits on the defensive side of the ball. They have a young linebacker core. Most of them are sophomores. They're receivers, young group as well, and sophomores and juniors. Uh, one senior, though, uh, Marquand Jamison, last week had about 160 yards. Right. They got this one kid with seven touchdowns. I mean, offensively and defensively, they are a sound team. You've seen that a lot from Carver games. They've been high scoring. You know, we have this talk about their two great defensive players, but a lot of points have been put up against, you know, the same as about us. But last week in their loss, 42 was put on them. So that gives us a little bit of hope, you know. So I'm hoping that our offense can pull out strong. Not to mention Carver got 42 points scored on them. They're all the way in Louisiana, which is quite a drive. <laughs> yeah. To fly it however you want to put it. That's quite like a drive for them to go. I think that's a kind of a different game for them it's not the same as region football it's not the same as on the road football in Alabama very different environment that they've probably never played in before so I wouldn't put that loss on them too much I think Car Carver's a great team that we need to be a little bit scared of here yeah no they you know like you said they traveled Baton Rouge uh, played at Southern University Stadium which must be a really cool experience my hope is that maybe the uh, maybe the ride there and back has got them a little bit tired <laughs> um, but I, I think that you know, after that loss, they may come in a little angry here. So, so Watumka's going to have to bring their A game if they want to be able to win. This we've game. we've talked about how, you know, away games like Mobile or Huntsville can affect the team. I could <laughs> imagine, you know, all right, guys, let's get on the bus. We got to go, you know, over, you know, three states away to the swamp or whatever. But I mean, that's a very good point. You know, they could be a little tired from this bus ride, and you know, they might be thinking that we're not a strong opponent. You know, looking at the record of you know, six and one. They might think, well, this is Potomka, we can roll them over easily because we've got, you know, two of the best recruits in the nation. Well, not nation, in the state, my apologies. But Watumka is still a very strong team, more stronger than we've been before, I think, apart from, you know, 2017 in the you know, state championship. But you know, those days are long ago. We beat them 27-7 to 7 in 2017. Well, it's not 2017 anymore. So, but Watumka is still a very strong team, and I think one of the things that we're going to have to do here is pass the ball. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and I, I, I don't think that how Watumka has done this year is going to have anyone selling us short right now. I, I think Watumka has been incredible this season so far, and I think we're going to see it again coming up this Friday. I, I just, I've been so impressed with Watumka all season long. I promise you, Carver knows that how good we've been, and mm -hmm. they're going to be coming in pretty strong too. Yeah, like Kevin said, Watumka's put out a great performance all year long. Uh, they, they can be downplayed a little bit. They can downplay themselves even a little bit. I think we'll show up here in the big moment. It's a spotlight. we got to win this game. This is a must win for us. I think all of our players can show up. They can show out. They can do what they need to do to win the game. I think this is what needs to happen. You know, it's yeah. a very important region game. You want to talk about the difference between going on the road in Alabama and going on the road in Louisiana. Well, the good news is we can compare games. We have 
Carver versus Stanhope and Wetumpka versus Stanhope. We can look at those two. I think we have a close matchup. I think if this is a high scoring game, we might be in trouble. That, that's how Stanhope was. They were a little bit high scoring about doubling our game against Stanhope. I think our defense needs to play really strong in this game. You know, match Carver's highly ranked defensive lineman. It's gonna I be think hard to do. It, it will be, but I think we have a chance here. Well, real quick, what are y'all's guys' keys to winning this game? Uh, well, my, you know, I think you touched on it just a little bit, but we're going to have to be successful in the air. I mean, Nate was not as strong last week, but we've seen him be able to, to make some really big plays through the air. Of course, he's, he's most known for his running, but I think this time it's going to have to come through the passing game. Uh, I mean, we, we've talked about Carver, strong defensive line, and I, I think that you're going to have to take advantage of, of the younger people in the secondary for the Carver defense, and I, I think that's what it's going to take to win it. Touching on the strong defensive line, my key to the game, you, you, we got to stop Quay Rousseau. we got to stop James Smith. If we can't stop them, I think we're in for a load of trouble. I think we're going to have to isolate running the ball. I think we're going to have to just straight pass the ball, throw in some runs here and there, maybe catch them off guard. I think this might have to be running up the middle type thing for Mike Diller again, get little chunks two and three yards, moves up the field and question right here. This with a little bit, I mean, excuse me, Nate Rogers, a little bit of passing game, but like I said, we're going to have to stop those two on defense. Yeah, I mean, the defense is going to be tough, so I think offense has to score as much as they can, as, much, as like on every drive. I think they have to fill up the box score. I think we have to keep the pedal of the metal and, you know, put pressure on their defense especially. So I think offense has to score a lot. You know, y'all three each touched on the offensive side of the ball for Wetumpka. I feel like they are downplaying, you know, Carver's offense here a little because Chris Johnson has 25 touchdowns. He's throwing to somebody. And they, he has a young receiver core and is able to get, you know, that much out of them already. That's a pretty terrifying sight for other schools, you know, who are going to be playing Carver. But I think Dorian Jackson and the rest of our defense, our secondary, our safeties, you know, we've seen what they can do, and we need them to repeat that against Carver because this is going to be one of the biggest games of the season. Yeah, touching back on what you just said, we need Dorian Jackson, Tristan Bennett, Justin Crumbo, AJ Harris, all of them need to come up strong for this game, stronger than they ever have before, I think. Yeah, yeah and, you know, we've already talked about how, how good Christian Johnson is. We know he's got a really fast release on his throws. I mean, he's getting the ball out quick so you know secondary they're gonna have to be ready for it and I think that they will be I think they did a, a fantastic job last week as we've said and I think we'll see another great performance this time yeah uh, so that's gonna wrap up the keys of the game there I think that's a lot of great insight from you guys and we're well educated answers there this is gonna be a great game I feel it's gonna be a great, it's gonna game. Be a great game so we're gonna wrap up the show here with the final segment some people's favorite my favorite I think picks so we're opening it off here with Russell County at Pike Road got Pike Road on this one you know it, it, it's at home again they've opened up some new stands I think there's gonna be a lot of fans there for them and they got Pike Road I think it's an easy one for me personally I think it should be for everyone I'm gonna go Pike Road the records just show it again Pike Road with the scary run game even a little bit more scary of a passing game the very dual threat gun Pike Road Pike Road <laughs> well, that's all he had to say now I'm kind of mad that they open up the new stadiums for after we play them they might did that on purpose they, they didn't want <laughs> They didn't want our Wetumpka traveling Indians, you know, showing up and invading their stadium. But that was a close game. It's Pike Road, obviously. I'd hope Russell County beats them. Imagine that. That's a that's a headline. Prattville Christian at Alabama Christian. This is going to be my super dog pick, as they say on game day. I've got PCA here on the road against Alabama Christian. I'd like to see it happen. Um, I, I, I'm going to go Alabama Christian. This is a tight game. Both of them are three and three. But PC, PCA, excuse me, yeah, they they got shut out by uh, St. James, I think. They got shut out. Uh, Alabama Christian put up a, a pretty good fight against St. James. Uh, I'm going to go based off that. I'm going to go Alabama Christian. Yeah, that, that St. James loss for Alabama Christian, that was last week. So they're, you know, coming off of the loss, they may be a little angry here. I, I'm taking Alabama Christian now. No, I'm going to Alabama Christian as well here in the Holy War. Uh, Beauregard <laughs> at Elmore County. I've got Beauregard. I, I think they've been really strong all season. Elmore County coming off of a fresh loss. It's a home game for them. I think if they can put up the points again, they can win this one, but I got Beauregard. Uh, like Taylor said, Beauregard's a strong team. They're 6-0, but I'm going to take Elmore County here. It's at home. I'm going to say a little underdog action coming from Elmore County. They're 4-2, but I, they got to win this game. It's a home game. They need it. I'm going to Elmore County. Well, Beauregard has been dominant all season long. You talk about your super dog pick. This is mine. Beauregard's winning big. Yeah. 
hate to leave you on an island, Evan. I've used this phrase a lot in this show. Oh, it's fine, Dustin. <laughs> I like going. being on my island. <laughs> I'm going with Beauregard as well. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your island. Evan. No, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to after this week. Marbury at Hopeful. I've got hopeful for this one. It's a home game. You know, we love to talk about Sean Brackett. He, you know, uh, he's really strong in the game. I think they have the win. Marbury did not impress me at Elmore County. I think hopeful has the win. Yeah, same. Just like Taylor said, Marbury has not really been impressive all year. Uh, I'm going to go hopeful. And just like you said about Sean Brackett, he was the only Montgomery Advertiser Player of the Week, along with Mr. Gavin Baxter right yeah. here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Sean Brackett, I think he had around like 12, in between 12 and 16 carries for around 133 yards. About 170. It's 170, yeah. excuse me, man. Well, uh, I'm going to go hopeful. I've been dogging him a little bit, but I really hope they win this game. Well, I, Hopeful, they've been impressive for a lot of games, but they did struggle a little bit against Tallahassee. They unfortunately lost on the road, but now they're back at home. I'm taking Hopeful. Our resident you know, Hopeful expert here, he's, we've, we've coined him that on the show so far. Now, I just love the Bulldogs, you know, try to slap out. I'm going Hopeful. So, usually this is one of the easier parts of the show here is our score predictions, but right now it's not feeling so easy you know after talking about that matchup against carver so what are the score predictions for i've got week? 30 to 28 i think it's a really close one i think we're going to need to keep it under 40 and i think we tump can win this one close uh dude this this is hard it, it really is hard um i'm gonna go 38 to 28 Watumka. i know it's not as close as as it probably will be i think Watumka maybe wears down that Carver defense, hopefully, I'm really hoping here. It's just a little bit of a stretch, but Logan, Logan Wayall puts in a field goal or two. I'm going 38-28. Yeah, well, I'm with you on the Wetumpka score there. I think Carver is going to be a lot closer, though. I've got 38-35. It's going to be a little bit of a shootout here, but I think Wetumpka comes out on top. Well, after hearing you three, it's making me feel a little bit better about mine. I'm going to go 28-24, of course, with Wetumpka Indians winning, and I hope they do. Uh, we've only been wrong about, uh, you know, with Tumka winning once on the show. So that's a great stat line, I guess. <laughs> and pretty accurate. Uh, that includes Tribal Talk for this week. You know, if you're a fan, uh, you know, leave a comment or something. We'll respond to him. Maybe he won't. I will. <laughs> now, we love some engagement. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about it, tell your family about it. As always, it's been Tribal Talk. And remember, win the moment and go India.